Hello friends, first graders, Mrs. Padilla here. And this week we've been talking about poetry. And I know that you have been reading some poems with Mrs. Monarchy and Mrs. Smith as well. And I decided that I wanted to share one of my favorite poems with you. So um, to those friends who know me, uh, you know that I love being outside, I love nature, I love trees, I love water. Um, and my favorite poet, I actually have a connection to. Um, his name is Robert Frost, or his name was Robert Frost. He's no longer living. And he uh, he lived where I grew up. So I grew up in Massachusetts, which is all the way on the other side of the country. And Massachusetts is in a part of the country called New England. And New England is known for many things. It's known for snow <laughs> and pretty leaves. And, um, Robert Frost loved to write about the things that he saw in nature. And I can give you a couple names of some of his poems, and that will give you an idea of some of the things that he liked to read about, uh, or I'm sorry, that he liked to write about. Um, he had a poem called Tree at My Window. Can you guess what that poem was about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just about looking out at a tree outside his window. Um, he wrote a poem called Birches. Birch trees, if you don't know, are those trees. They have um, the white bark and then it looks like it has the black lines on it. Um, so that tree was about, or that poem was about some birch trees. He wrote a poem called The Pasture. A pasture is a field and in the poem, The Pasture, he visits a cow. Um, he wrote a poem called The Woodpile about a woodpile. Uh, he wrote a poem called A Patch of Old Snow that's about some snow left on the ground that's not pretty and white anymore. So he really liked to write about the things that he saw in nature around him. Um, and since this week we're focusing on finding those words in poems that make us feel something, I'd like to read to you my favorite poem of all time and see if it makes you feel anything because I feel lots of things every time I read this poem. So I'll show you what poem I'm going to read today. I am reading a poem called Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Can you guess what this poem is about? Yeah, it's about stopping by woods on a snowy evening. And so just by listening to the title, as soon as I hear the title, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, I start to feel things because I have connections. I know what a snowy evening feels like. I know what a snowy evening in the woods feels like. And so I already start to feel things like the peacefulness. I know that when it snows at night, it's very dark and it's very quiet because the snow makes everything feel much quieter. So as soon as I hear the, po the poem's title, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, I immediately start to feel calm and peaceful because I can imagine the slow snow falling on the quiet ground. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a bigger copy so that you can see the poem with me while I read it. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh, I forgot to tell you one more thing. Robert Frost in this poem loves to use repetition. So repetition in a poem is when you hear the same thing over and over. And usually when they use, uh, when an author uses repetition, it's because they're trying to kind of really make you focus on one of the lines. And so listen while I'm reading this poem and you might hear the same line said more than one time. Here we go. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening. Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. These woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep 
and miles to go before I sleep. So as I read that poem, were there any words that popped out at you and made you feel anything? Let me share with you some of the words that make me feel something. Um, in the line here that talks about his woods filling up with snow. Again, I kind of talked about how when it, the snow falls and we get a lot of snow on the ground, everything gets quiet. So when I got to this line about filling up, that made me think of like a quiet piece because I know when um, the fields are filling up with snow, things get very, very quiet. Um, here, when they use the word queer, queer is another word for strange. And so when he's saying my little horse must think it queer, my horse must think it strange, it kind of made me like, that's weird, you know, kind of strange. Um, and then down here, he talks about between the woods and frozen lake. Oh, I heard that word frozen and I immediately could feel the chilly. I'm thinking about a frozen lake and it takes a lot of cold to freeze a whole lake. Um, the darkest evening of the year, that kind of brought a peace for me. I was thinking about the darkness around him on this quiet evening. Um, I liked this line. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. I can hear the horse's bells, you know, those big bells that horses can wear, like sleigh bells. I can hear the bells jingling when I read that. Um, that makes me feel, kind of gets a smile to my face because when I hear horses jingle their bells, it makes me smile. Um, and you probably caught at the end, he used repetition on the last line, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Um, that line that's one of the most famous lines from the poem and that those words also thinking about he's saying he still has miles to go so when i hear the word miles i feel kind of tired it makes me feel a little tired because i know what it feels like to be in a really really long trip um and still have a long way to go and that can make you feel really tired and sleep sleepy you just you just want to go to bed and you still have this big long trip to make um, so that's the poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. I'm going to finish up this video with um, another, another rendition of Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening that ends with some kids sharing what they know about poetry. And then um, I might add in the Google Classroom a copy of another poem by Robert Frost, a short one that if you wanted to try reading a poem all by yourself, you could give it a try. All right, friends, have fun reading your poetry this week, and I will see you soon. Bye. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds, the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. because it can have a lot of different meanings to it. Poem is a pretty way of saying something. You can put some words together and make like a tune or a rhythm without actually having music. There's like music in your head when you read it. It's, it feels like that to me, you know.